Where did you come from? And where are you going? It would seem to most people that if we ask the question, where did you come from? And where are you going? Somebody will ask, so what do you mean by that? Where did you come from? And where are you going? Now all of a sudden you don't get such a direct, impromptu answer. What you mean, origin? What you mean, creation? Before you existed, there had to be a plan, there had to be a purpose, there had to be an intent. Where are you going? What will be your final destination? So you ask, what you mean by that? I mean exactly what I said. Final means finished, over, through, the end. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave us an example of this world that we are on a trip and we have been dropped into this world to eat and to drink and to rest and to work for some time and after that we will get back on this mount vehicle and we'll be headed towards another destination so if we were brought into being that is we were brought into existence if there, we were brought into existence by someone's will by someone's determination then there is someone who has willed existence and what is existence go to your dictionary go to the funk and wagner go to the uh, of the oxford go to the merriam webster dictionary and look up the word existence it says everything everything within space and time now think about that there is not even a description in any language that can tell you exactly what is within space and time. Space and time has limitations, but we have never traveled there because everyone is regulated by what? Time. The black, the white, the male, the female, every human being is governed by the time. The presidents, the chairmen, the champions, everyone is governed by time. You only have a certain amount of it, time. Everyone is looking at the time, what time we started, what time we end. Everyone is governed by the time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth, sent a revelation to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he swore and he said, Asr innal insana. Surely all the human beings from the past and the present and the future, how many they might be, countless number of human beings, all of them, lafi khasr, they are losers. They will lose everything that they have gained. They will lose everything they have been given. They will lose their sight. They will lose their mind. They will lose their strength. They will lose their wife, their husband, their children. And eventually, they will lose their lives. Has anybody got any doubt about that? Anybody got any doubt about that? You got doubt that you're going to lose eventually everything, including your life. And there's somebody here who won't lose that. Somebody who won't have some doubt about that. Stand up and tell us who you are because you must be a Martian. And even if you are a Martian from Mars or you're a Moonian from the moon, whomsoever you are, you will die because you're just a part of the creation. Except the people who have a contract of faith, a trust, an awareness and they have as a result of this contract and this awareness they have adopted a certain position the position is that they have faith they have a commitment they are aware they are conscious and they have begun to act responsible Aminu Salihat means good actions actions that bear good fruits responsible actions and they cooperate. Bil Haq with truth. Bil Sabr. And they are patient and they are perseverant with issues that come up as a result of this life. Let's talk for a moment about that. Now I'm speaking more particularly to the non Muslims. Because the Muslims, we have no doubt. We already got the evidence. We already got the getaway card. You know the getaway card. Don't leave home without it. American Express, whatever you want to call it. We all got the Diners Club, American Express. We got a better card than that. We got the getaway card. It's called Shahada. But for those that don't have the getaway card, they are not aware that I want to talk about this to you in particular. Let me talk to my non-Muslim colleagues. Let me talk to them for a minute about this issue. The creation, the evolutionary development of the bringing into existence the human being. 
according to the Quran, which is supported by science. Not that the word of God needs to be supported or proven by science, because the word of God is supreme. Science is still finding out. But for those of us who follow the role of science, the whole world, the whole cosmos as we know it, is made up of gas. Outer space, inside ourselves, gas. The basic proponent of gas is water, H2O. There's the proof of the Quran. The Quran was revealed close to 1500 years ago. Science just discovered that the cosmos is made up of gas maybe just about 80 or 90 years ago. So man is made of water and an earth substance. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He created you from, from Nutfa and after that he calls it Turab. Another place he called it Teen, clay, dirt, substance. So man is made of two kinds of substance. Dirt, earth, substance, and water. We know that our bodies is made of three quarters of water. We know that. That's why when a person dies, gradually the body shrivels up like a dry leaf because there's no more water. The skin dries up, the eyeballs dry up, the, the, all the organs dry up, the tongue dries up, the hair falls out, and nothing is left except just a dry corpse. And the only thing that continues to grow maybe is the hair and the nails until a person looks like a snake because the human being is made of water. I ask you, what brought this life force into existence? Like the sun is energy, the moon is energy, the electric in, in, in the walls is energy, our breath is energy, the life we have is energy, and it is all limited, but it is given to us. So this existence, the placing of this existence, this determination called life, comes about by some phenomenal authority. So you non-Muslims, all of you out there, you have come about, you are in this world because you have been given the gift of a life force, a gift. So the one who gave us life has a condition over us, that is we must live that life in accordance to the terms. Unfortunately, as a non-Muslim, you may not know the terms. So I say to you non-Muslims, you have been living in a house for 20 years or 30 years or 40 years or 50 years. You have been living in a house that has been given. You have not paid any rent any day that you have been inside that house. I'm talking about the body that houses you. That is your house. The personality that is you, your name, your person is inside of a house. It's called a body. I ask you, this body that has grown from where it is until now, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, I ask you where did it come from? How you get inside that house? What rent you paid on that house? What maintenance have you done on that house? What appreciation have you paid on that house? What tribute have you paid on that house? What tax have you paid on that house? What agreement do you have on that house? What contract do you have for that house? Absolutely none. So what do you think? You've just been given a house for nothing? Tell me, the landlord that you have right now, don't you have the obligation to pay him something? Don't you have the obligation to recognize that landlord? Don't you have an obligation to respond to that landlord? Don't you have an obligation to pay tribute to that landlord? Don't you have an obligation to take care of the house that belongs to that landlord? Well, that landlord is the lord of the land or the house that you live in. But there is another lord. A Lord that has created and sustained all the houses that we live in called all the human beings and all the bodies. I ask you, is that Lord, that one that created and that one that gave us, the one who is the one that gave benefit to life and existence, is that Lord worthy of recognition? I'm asking you, non-Muslims, that if you knew who was the Lord and the sustainer of your life and your body, who is the governor of your life and gave you that gift, if you knew who it was, like your landlord, don't you think you should at least recognize? So now just recognize, I'm not asking you no trick question. Don't you think that the one who is responsible for giving you your life, sustaining you with all the functions of your body and your person and this life is worthy of your recognition? Don't you think that that same Lord is worthy of some kind of tribute? I don't mean you got to pay rent. I don't mean money. 
I don't mean month to month, week to week. That's not what I mean. I mean tribute that you should at least give praise, thanks. Don't you think you should at least be thankful, be grateful, be mindful? Don't you think you should pay something, pay attention? How many of you would at least think minimally we should pay something? Finally, if that Lord, if you came to know that Lord, if you came to know about that sustainer, if you came to know about that one that he has given you also conditions, you don't know the conditions right now. But if you came to know those conditions, and they were very simple conditions, the main condition of life is to do good, speak good, work good, be honest, be decent, interact with people, pay, be respectful, pay tribute, recognize, be honest, produce good actions, share with people, be honorable, be decent. These are some simple conditions. So if the Lord of your body, of your life, the one that gave you this life, the one that you say you're willing to recognize, the one that you say you're willing to give tribute to, don't you think that you would be willing to abide by two or three simple conditions? How many of you would agree to that? That same one could snatch your life right now. You could drink a glass of water and choke on it and die right now. You could eat some of that popcorn and choke on it right now. You can walk out of here and trip and fall and break your neck right now. Your heart could stop beating right now. Your eyes could just bust out your head right now. You could lose your breath right now. This could happen right now. So don't be thinking that you got a whole lot of time to think about it. Now I'll be thinking about that next year when I see this guy when he come back or I'm gonna watch a movie, I'm gonna read a book or something. No, right now, you need to think about it. Because tomorrow morning you could be dead. You say, oh, not me. Yes, you. Death comes to pretty ladies. Death comes to young people. Death comes to handsome young men. Death comes to people who is all dressed up. Death comes to people who just graduated. Death comes to people that ain't ready yet. Death comes quick. Death comes without an announcement. I'm talking to you that you need to answer this question just as if you didn't have any more time. So let me ask it again. Don't you think that the one that you said you'd be willing to recognize, don't you think that the one that you'd be willing to give some tribute to, don't you think that if there were some small conditions for your living your life, which is some that I just named, that you and I would be willing to at least observe those conditions if it was vital to our life? How many would agree to that? If you are at least willing to do that, then I say to you that you should understand what it means to be a Muslim. This is our life that is on earth. And if you think about life itself, life has two kinds of ends to it. There is a micro and there is a macro. Micro means all the way down to what we cannot see, microscopic. And we can continue to go down because there are finer, 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 smaller, smaller objects, but we find no matter how small, how micro they become, still we are able to what? Look at them and see they're organized. Micro to macro. Macro means the furthest out that you can go. The largest, the most complicated, out that we can go. Let me give you an exa example of that. This is our Earth. And our Earth is a part of the solar system. Our solar system is a part of our galaxy. In our galaxy, our sun is one of the smallest stars, one of the smallest stars in our galaxy. Our galaxy is called what? It's called the Milky Way galaxy. A galaxy is a number of, a cluster of solar systems. Solar systems means systems that revolve around suns like ours. Stars that are suns glowing heat with attraction like ours. So a galaxy is a cluster of, ga a galaxy is a cluster of solar systems that are swirling around organize around stars like our sun. Our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, has billions of stars in it. Our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, has billions of stars. Our sun is only one star, and it is a very small and not fairly, it's not even bright star. The galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is a part of something called a nebula. A nebula. What is a nebula? A nebula 
is a cluster of billions of galaxies. Okay, imagine this now. A nebula is a cluster of billions of galaxies. All of them swimming around, floating in orbit without clashing with one another. Since some kind of intricate organized orchestration and there now have been discovered billions of nebula billions of nebula so therefore going out into time and space the human being's mind cannot imagine a nebula you can't imagine billions of nebula so from micro to macro we see the organization i ask you non-muslims if it has been designed it has to be what a designer if it has been fashioned there has to be what a fashioner strength support reputation you now have the responsibility because you have been told you may not want to accept it you might want to be blind to it you want to play around a little bit more you want to fornicate a little bit more you want to drink a little bit more whiskey you want to drink take a little more drugs you want to dance a little bit more i ask you then are you willing to accept the responsibility of your lives to govern your lives accordingly? We are offering you a treasure. That treasure is to discover your purpose in life. Is there any other non-Muslims in this room who would be willing to accept the premise that there is only one power in this world, one creator for this world, who has given us life who we should recognize, who we need to pay tribute to in our words and in our actions, and whom, if we knew the law, if we knew the terms, that we should conform our lives.